Chris Hoffman here, creator of the Salt City Strangers, going to show you today in Photoshop how I create panels for my comic books. So here is a page from Salt City Strangers number three. We'll zoom in here a little bit so that you can check it out a little bit better. So it is a uh, from the story. Golden Spike is waking up from a uh, sort of a knockout. He's in the hospital, and the gull is all up in his face um, as he wakes up. So what you can see here, it's all been inked, and uh, but it's got some artifacts of stuff that we don't want. So you can see, like, we've got this page four up here. We've got some uh, cutting lines and whatnot in here. I'll show you at the top of this one. See how all of the uh, ink is bled around here, and we want that to be like a nice, sharp edge for our panel. So to start off, we want to make sure that the page is the right size. So under uh, image and then image size, you'll see it's at six and a half inches by nine and a half inches. That's pretty standard for comic book size. And at 300 resolution, 300 DPI or a PPI actually, uh, what you should have it at so that it will print out and not look pixelated. There's a whole bunch of videos and information on why that is, but just no 300, um, uh, 300 on that setting. So here, what we're going to do is over here on the right side of the um, right side of Photoshop, we're going to click on the button over here that says create new layer. And that puts a layer on top of our old layer. And uh, what we do with this layer, this is where all of our panel borders and our gutters are going to go. So while you click on here, so that that's the active frame, or layer, excuse me, and then go to Edit, Fill, White, and changing the contents, making sure this is on white, uh, leave everything else on the defaults, and then click OK. And now we've can't see any of our artwork anymore, which is just fine. That's exactly what we want. Now we can see over here in the layers panel, we have this option for opacity. So it's at 100% opacity right now. So we're going to click on the drop down and bring that down oh, to about 60, 59, somewhere in there is just fine. Just so we can see where the panels are underneath the um, underneath this layer. So now what we're going to do is use the select um, the select tool over here, the rectangular marquee. So you can press M or you can click on it over here. And then I'm going to find the corner of my, the uh, upper left hand corner of all my panels here. And this one's super easy because this is one big rectangle is all of the, um, all of the panels in here, but I can show you, uh, I'll probably make another video to show you how to make weirder panels work, but here's the basics. So I start in the upper left hand corner and then I select all the way through all of the panels that I have on here. And I'll let go. Now you can see the marching ants are going all the way around all of the panels here. Then I press the delete key and that gets rid of the white section in the middle of our selection here. Then I'll, I'm going to get rid of the selection. There's two ways you can do it. You can go up here in the menu, click on select and then say click on deselect or you can use the shortcut key control D so that's what I'll do control D and now the marching ants are gone now um, if I take the opacity up over here back up to hundred you can see now that the I've got sort of a frame around the page here that's getting rid of a bunch of the artifacts like that page number and whatnot so we're doing pretty well here so far so I'll take that back down just so I can see the the stuff around the outside and now we'll sort of work on these gutters here that are in between panels 1, 2, and 3. So same procedure. We'll take this uh, marquee tool and come over here and just select the area that is the gutter. And now you can see I've got that selected. And we'll do the same thing. We'll, we're going to select this one as well. If you hold down the Shift key while you're selecting again, you'll add to the selection that you already have up. So we're adding to the selection here, being a little bit too careful. That's okay. And see, I'm making sure that I don't go all the way into the next panel. I'm staying somewhere right in the middle of the gutter here. Now we've got that selection. We, we're, we've let the selection go up over into, uh, over the top of the panels here at the top and 
over the bottom here at the bottom. So now we'll catch this gutter that's going across. We'll click select again, or shift, excuse me, and then drag across. And now you can see I'm adding the overlaps that came out on those selections into this selection. Now it's all one big selection. And one more here for the one here's the bottom, holding down shift again. And selecting across, perfect. So now um, you can see that I've got all the internal gutters all selected here. And now here in layer one again, we're going to uh, make sure that we have layer one selected and then click on edit and then fill and then white again. And then control D again to get rid of our selection. And we'll bring the opacity back up. I think I'm pronouncing that opacity differently every time I say it. It's part of the fun here. So you can see now that we've got white in between all of the nice gutters here. We'll zoom in so that I can show you. So you can see here that now um, we've got everything that was in between and on the outside sort of painted out. But now this panel is kind of, it doesn't have a line on this side. Um, the line is inconsistent over here, it's bleeding out, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a stroke around the, all of the uh, white that's going on here uh, as part of the panels. So to do that, we'll go into Layer, and then click on Layer Style, and then click on Stroke. And as you can see here, what you'll uh, you've got a bunch of options into here. You'll want to make sure that position is on outside. That's really important. You don't want it on center or inside. Outside is the important part. And then you can change the size of the stroke as well. So you'll see right now it's at five pixels, which is where I want it. But I'll make this a little bit bigger. So now you can see what's happening. It's putting a nice black stroke around all of the panels. So now it makes it so that I can change the width of the uh, panel borders all at the same time so that they're all even and uniform. So one of the big problems that I had uh, with um, uh, trying to draw the panels like with a pen brush or something like that is that they tend to um, they don't have sharp corners and they don't you can't change them all at the same time so if you wanted if you looked at your page and decided, you know what, I don't want it to be uh, 10 pixels wide, I want it to be 5 pixels wide, you'd have to go and draw all of the borders again. So I'm going to change this again to 5 pixels, where I like it. And uh, I'll show you, actually, let's go in here and we'll zoom in here on the corners. And now you can see these are nice, sharp corners. They're not circles or... Um, uh, curves or anything like that. Unless that's what you want. That's not what I was looking for. I like nice sharp corners on the panels like that. So what we'll, what I'll show you the difference is the reason why it's so important to go with outside on position is look, so, look at what it looks like when it's on inside. See that's when you start getting the curves on the corner. Not what I'm looking for. And then center also. That's not as bad. That's, that's pretty good. But uh, outside's where it's at for sure. So now, one of the cool things about doing it this way is now you can manipulate these, um, these panels outside of having to draw them individually. So let's say I felt like this panel number three was just way too big. Um, what I could do is I could just make a selection here on layer number one and then fill this selection by going to edit fill and then filling with white. And now you can see it's redrawn that border on the inside here uh, as big as that little window that I've created is. Pretty neat. So you can do that with any sort of any sort of space with it. So the other thing is if you decide like the, the window is too small, what you could do is use the magic wand tool to select this, um, this panel's window. And you see when I click on that, it just picks that window perfectly. And now what I can do is I can press my arrow keys, and you can see it just starts moving the selection to the left. 
And now what I can do is, once I've got it into position here, I can click on press delete on my keyboard and see it starts opening up that window. And it's the exact same size, so I'm not getting any weird um, changes in how big this window is going across. I can move it all the way over to here until I can see that I've gone too far. I'm actually miss, uh, grabbing in part of the gutter that was drawn in, so I can bring this back to here and uh, I can actually hit um, go undo back before I hit clear, going back here under history and bring it back a little bit right about there I think is where it's at. Perfect. So let's say also that I wanted to create this big panel here in the middle. I wanted to make it uh, two panels instead of one panel. I can do the same thing here. I can click, make a marquee selection right in here, hit edit, and then fill with white. Deselect by hitting control D. And now I've got two panels in here. Doesn't make much sense in this uh, comic, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So, but now this is only for straight across uh, gutters on your panels. So what if you wanted to make one that was like diagonal, something to that effect. So I'll undo here. I'll go backwards on my on my history, take it back to um, before I put in that gutter. Now what you can do is over here in the layers section, click on new layer again so that you have one that's above the panels that you had before. And you know what? It's good practice to um, Oops, panels. It's uh, good practice to name your layers because once these start, you start getting to 10, 15 of them, it starts to get annoying when you're having to turn them on and off. So good practice there. So layer two, we're going to just get rid of. It's going to be garbage, so I'm not labeling that one. Anyway, so we are on layer two, and I come back here to the marquee tool. And what I need to make is a selection that is a lot taller than this panel is because I'm going to be turning it. If I made the if I made the marquee selection only this big, when I turned it, the top and the bottom will actually end up in the frame. So I don't want to do that. I want to make one that's bigger. And it doesn't matter how big you make it. So um, I'm going to make it right around oops. I don't want like too much variance between this one and the other gutters that are already in there. So now we've got our selection. We can hit edit and fill with white. And now we've got this uh, sort of white um, selection here. I'll hit control D. And now you can see that we've painted over sort of part of the picture here. So what you can do with this one is now you can uh, use the transform tool to rotate it. To do that, you hit edit and then transform and then rotate. And then you'll see when you mouse over these little squares on the corners and on the side, it turns into a sort of curved arrow with arrows, or yeah, with arrows pointing uh, on both sides. When you hold down your mouse button now, you can see that I can rotate it around. Got like a propeller airplane thing going on here. So now I can move this to the degree angle that I want. And uh, so when you've got the, the curved arrow, it will turn, your selection will turn. And if you put your mouse towards the middle, you'll get this sort of black arrow. Then you can move it without turning. So let's put this like right in the middle of this panel. So right about there. Click on the confirm button here at the top, the checkbox. And now we've got it moving. Uh, we've got the angle that we want, but now we need to get the border around it, make it part of our panels layer. So, but before we do that, I'll use the marquee tool to come in here and make a big selection across here. And then I'm chopping off the very top of this of this uh, uh, gutter here. So I've made the selection here, and I hit delete. And now you can see it got rid of that part that was poking up here into this panel. I'll hit Control D again, so I get rid of that selection. I'll do the same thing at the bottom. Select all the way over. Make sure that all my marching ants are in the gutter as well. Click delete again, and watch this one part here. You'll see disappear. Perfect. Hit Control D again, and now what I'll do is come up here to Layer Two, and uh, what you want to do is uh, merge the layer down. So if you click on Layer, and then 
click on merge down or use the shortcut key control E it's gonna mash down that uh, that white sort of uh, gutter that we have there into the other one and into the panels and then automatically it will get the stroke attribution that we have down here and now you can see that it's a uh, uh, diagonal panel or a gutter so you can do this with all sorts of shapes you can do this with circles or or diamonds, uh, you can do like an explosion effect, whatnot. So whatever sort of effect you're trying to get out of your uh, get out of your panel. And so uh, now the thing is, if you've made a mistake here and you want to get rid of get rid of one of these bars, uh, one of these gutters, it's uh, uh, it's kind of a um, you'd have to be real careful if you're going to try to use the marquee tool to come in here and select and then delete what what I'll show you here is what happens is you get these little sort of stumps you know what I mean and so you have to sit there and try five or six times to do the selection just perfectly unless what you do is you use the magic wand tool like we did earlier click on magic wand and then click in here so that you get the exact dimensions of the top and bottom and then just use your arrows to move it over again you can see if I get the selection to cover the entire um, gutter then click delete now you can see when I hit control D and get rid of it there's no stumps left over in the in the panels here that's gonna be my new copyright panel stumps hashtag panel stump life so anyway that's uh, that's how I get my panels into my comic books. If you have any uh, questions, leave them in the comments below or go ahead and get in contact with me. If there's other videos you would like to see on this subject, I'd be more than happy to make them. Leave those in the comments as well. Hope you're having an awesome time and uh, have fun making comics.